Previously on Empires Season 2. What is this? I wonder what's going on here. I really need to get rid of these eggs, so I'm just gonna throw them at whatever this is. <laughs> Somebody's doing something weird, and they're probably in the middle of setting it up, <laughs> so I'm not gonna worry about it too much for now. That's very peculiar. Do you know anything about this? I've been trying to figure out what's going on here. Lots of weird things have been happening. I don't think I did this. Y you've not been breaking the server with some sort of magical music. Not that I know of. And I think some people have been sending animals through. They've not returned. They've They're... not returned, no. <laughs> They're probably- Then I will stay away from- They are probably the very portal. dead. <laughs> It says, new portal, who dis? I have the perfect Hello? note to send back. <laughs> back. Jimmy is, in fact, a toy. Oh, so you oh, get oh. Oh. So there I was, absent-mindedly tending my orchard, when suddenly, my worlds collided. Um... <laughs> what? what? <laughs> uh... <laughs> I, I think something may have happened. <laughs> and after the initial shock, it didn't take long for somebody to find me. Hey! <laughs> oh my gosh, where is that voice from? <laughs> Hello? A familiar oh, face! Oh my gosh, you found the pigs! Doc, welcome <laughs> yeah. in, come on down! Dude, I was on the bridge of free giftness, and then I thought, <laughs> okay, bro, where are we? What is happening? <laughs> are we doing a Hermitcraft recap? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I'm confused. Well, welcome to Empires, and welcome to the reason my life is going to be incredibly complicated for the next little while. Um, oh. Yeah, so this is this is my empire. You probably. Uh, seen a little bit of the server by now already, huh? Last thing I know, we went through a portal and then we were here. Yeah, um, that yeah. <laughs> happens a lot around here, I guess. So this is where I grow oh. the frog lights. Um, <laughs> this is this is part of my empire. This is the frog light orchard. Uh, the real farm's in the nether, but you know that already. I hear your voice, but I don't understand your words, magic man. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if, you, if you like pigs, have you considered dodos? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are those? So the whole thing with my empire is I'm bringing a lot of stuff back from the past. This is like all stuff I'm reconstructing from the ancient world. The other guys are telling stories. I'm telling the backstory. People decided that since I'm bringing so much stuff back from the past, a dodo kind of made sense. So uh, there you go. Dude, like now would be one of those times where you should have face cam on your videos. I'm literally <laughs> sitting here with my jaw dropped dude, like completely. It's, it's a lot to take it's in. It's insane. It's a lot yeah. to take in. But uh, yeah, come on around. Dude, uh, these come... trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been been building all these custom. They've been been growing in three different varieties for each of the different types of frog lights. Uh, beautiful. I see everybody else in the chat getting achievements. Do you want achievements? Give me, give me a second. You can be the first one on the server to get this one. Here you go. One, two, and three. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Our powers combined, Doc. We're going to be unstoppable. Uh, come around here. I'll, I'll show you the actual base because this is just like the yes. the outskirts of my city. I mean, I, I found all kinds of stuff on the bridge. Is that free to take? So yeah, I'm yeah. No, uh, mythical sausage has like a, a basically a grab bag over there. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. There was good stuff there, even. Well, on the Hermitcraft, if you go to the starter chest, there's only wooden pickaxes in there. <laughs> yeah, we... Way better here. Well, we're used to not having the entire Hermitcraft whitelist with us, so I feel like there's... We, we might have to make some changes. You might see some more wooden pickaxes in there. Those trees are also, you know, this is a texture pack with the... 
with the bits and bobs on the trees. I yeah, know. yeah, the the extra <laughs> fluffy <laughs> leaves. They're uh, they're yeah, kind of the best. They're so fluffy. I want to cuddle with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I miss them every time I go back to my single player world. But uh, yeah, I have a museum right here where I'm storing like wow. artifacts from the series. So there's there's a couple of cool things you can check out in there. I've got a couple of uh, a couple of things might not work unless you have the right texture packs. So I might have to hook everybody up later. All but right, uh, right. around here. This is uh, the main street, I guess, of, of my place. Ooh, and look uh, at that angel statue, man. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. Um, a few people think it looks a little familiar for, for somebody that you might know, but um, that's that's all lore. That's the deep lore, Doc. We'll, we'll get to that another right, time. Right. At the base of the angel statue is my storage system. And if you want to wow. grab some stuff to get yourself started, you are absolutely welcome to. I'm a hoarder. I tend to grab a ton of blocks that I never end up using, so... If you want to come in and take a look. I like the sound of that. Oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, this is the it's donation the, the donation chest. The offering box is right here. That leads down into the uh, the automated storage. And okay. then if you wander on down, uh, straight ahead of you is valuables. Maybe look, but don't touch. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. I got bits and pieces around here. So uh, this is something Whoa. that I know a guy like you is going to appreciate. I got a little bit of, little bit of lectern science going on in here. So oh, the oh. rest of the time it can... Yeah. It can masquerade as a tomb, you know, it can be nice and quiet in here. And then when I want to see where everything is, just turn the page. That's actually epic. Yeah, I got some block swappers underneath each of these. So they're all, yeah. they're all, yeah, uh, it's pretty... hide away the labels whenever the, uh, <laughs> the people who aren't in the but know come so around. Cool. I love it. I love it, man. That's awesome. That's a great idea, actually. Yeah, I, wow, I, that's cool. I like this place. It took me a while to put it together and it's kind yeah. of my pride and joy. So, uh, this is where I keep the leftover frog lights. Today. It's, it's, it's cozy for a crypt, man. It's totally cozy for a crypt. I'm Pe not saying, man. People have been people have been thinking that I'm a vampire because I basically live in this place. But trust me, that's that's not how it goes. Uh, but it's also kind of maze like you can easily get lost in. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a couple of hidden secrets here and there. I'm I'm planning on putting in a few things that uh, people can basically come down here and raid it like it's a dungeon sometimes. So oh, wow. maybe that'll happen whilst uh, you're still hanging out. We'll see. This is all really cool, man. I love it here. <laughs> Thank I love you. It here oh, you got allies. Yes, nice. yeah, yeah, and in fact, I'm looking for people to just make good use of these because I know, like, not everybody's yeah. gonna gonna jive with the the way of working with these guys. But I've, what version are we on? Uh, we're on 1.19, so no duplication. But maybe we can we can talk to you guys about <laughs> fixing that stuff up, right? <laughs> they can dupe. In 1.19, they can... You oh, can right, you're, you're talking about item duplication, not like... Yeah, yeah. not breeding, you said right? Good use. Yeah, right? Yeah, you said good use, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll cool. see how that goes. We'll see uh, how quickly the economy breaks around here. So everybody has their their realms, right? Um, yeah, their empires. Themes, mm -hmm. Yeah, and empires, that's crazy. Okay, yeah. so where do I go? I want a tour. Where do I go? Where's the next empire? Okay, next empire from here. It depends. Do you want Wild West? Do you want Steampunk? Or do you want World of Warcraft goblins? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Follow me this way. We'll, we'll take you back. We'll take you back to the bridge, and I can give you orientation from there. And honestly, oh, yeah. you probably want to go with the goblins first because I think Fwip might want his pet pig back. <laughs> oh, is this his? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That you you might have stolen his uh, his boy right there, but. That's debatable. It was on the bridge of free giftness. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's well, the name of the bridge. Let's see what he gives me in return for it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. the the ransom is gonna. You, you got off to a good start with the goblins for sure. <laughs> Are they friendly? Um. Well, Fwip is for the most part, as long as you stay on his good side. Um. Y you'll you'll see uh, how quickly you make friends and enemies around here. Okay. So stealing his pig is probably not not the good side, I guess. But, <laughs> we'll yeah. see. What wow, a great bridge is also really cool. Yeah, this was uh, all the way. This was episode five for me. <laughs> this was a lot yeah. of fun. Um, so if you head north about 400 blocks that way, you'll get to a big mountain. And on the opposite side of that mountain, that's the entrance to Gobland. That's where Fwip and the Goblins hang out. I guess, yeah, that's, I guess, the logical move. Yeah. I go there mm -hmm. with, his, with his pig. Yeah, there's a... A lot Somebody's of deep dark there. around there as well, so you'll you'll probably find there's uh, a few skulk senses you can snag while you're there if you're lucky. Okay, okay, sold. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, yeah, all right. Well, uh, good luck. Um, head around the yeah. opposite side of the mountain. You might bump into uh, Animalia while you're there. That's Lizzie's kingdom. But uh, yeah, right. look look for a, a a door in the mountain, and you'll be headed straight into Gobland. I just thought there was a pick up there, but it's a person. One oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Lizzie. Go say hi. See you later, hi. Doc.
So you know when company comes over and you realize what a mess your house is and it makes you want to clean up absolutely everything? Well, in my case, I kind of want to finish up some builds that I had planned a little while ago and was just kind of sitting on trying to wait for inspiration to strike. This street, immediately behind the Great Bridge Gatehouse, is still just a giant mess of stone boxes. And I've been working on a couple of designs, which I'm now a lot happier with, and I'm going to try and work on a few of these. If not get them all done in this episode, then at least make a concerted start. But the problem is, I have been struck by how much I like the roof of the museum over here. I had a lot of fun designing that, I want to build a lot more like it, and I need to build those with copper. And as it stands, right now on the server, there is not really a dedicated copper aging setup. So I have just been placing blocks around, and I placed a ton of these blocks out there on the street on the road leading up from the Great Bridge Gatehouse. But again, I don't just want to leave copper blocks lying around in my base while we've got guests here. And so I have decided, after placing these and thinking, yeah, this absolutely sucks to do, <laughs> placing them four blocks apart is a real pain, I'm going to do it. I'm going to rebuild David. For those of you who weren't here for Empires Season 1 or haven't seen my episodes about this in the Survival Guide Season 2, David was the machine I built to age copper. Effectively, a set of redstone devices that just split the copper blocks four blocks apart and keep them there until they've aged and then recall all of them so that we can turn this into this with minimal hassle. And it's just a super fun redstone project to sink my teeth into. So I figure underneath here, Underneath my storage system, at least heading towards where the copper stuff is stored, I want to build another secret staircase here in the catacombs. And that's going to lead down to another layer, which we're going to have to dig out right now. Another layer under my base in which we're going to age all the copper I will need to build some of these roofs. And the reason I'm building it this way, directly underneath my storage system, is mainly so that it will always be loaded in whilst I'm around here working on my base, which I plan to do quite frequently. Oh, and the wandering trader is visiting. I need to see if he has any miniature frog light. He's got sea lanterns, which are pretty close but unfortunately no miniature frog lights. I really want them for my frog light orchard. I think they look really good in the barrels and stuff around there. But yes, a secret staircase is going to lead down here to a level where I plan on building David 4.0. The fourth time I will have reconstructed this copper aging machine, but it's going to be glorious. The jewel of my season one empire is going to return for season two. And as for exactly how the Copper King's prize machine came to be rebuilt here in the ancient capital, trust in the lawman. But in the meantime, I need to go grab a cup of tea and my beacon because we've got a lot of digging to do. <laughs> Hello? Anyone home? Oh my goodness. Anyone home aside from you guys? <laughs> Lizzie? Hello? <laughs> Lizzie? Ooh. Oh my gosh, I'm surrounded by frogs. <laughs> I'm in the frog district. Hello! Hi, hi, good to see you again. Welcome to Critter City. Thank you. I've uh, had the most wonderful introduction, completely surrounded by frogs, but what a pretty neighborhood. Ah, oh, thank you. This is brand new, the Froggy District. As you can see, they're really making themselves at home. Yeah. Well, I have the perfect thing for the Froggy District. I was hoping you could trade me some slime in exchange for frog lights. Frog slime, yes. I have so much frog slime, and <laughs> I am in desperate need of frog lights. You know, okay. somebody pointed it out to me that this should have been lit by frog lights, and yeah. it's a crime that I didn't. So... <laughs> Well, there it are, is probably very good. There are green frog lights as well, so if you wanted some that fit in with the <gasps> colour scheme, then I've got a bunch yes. for you here. Oh, perfect. Okay, let me get the slime. How much do you need? Uh, ideally, three stacks of blocks would be perfect. Okay, yeah, I can absolutely do that. Uh, as you can see, we produce only the best slime wow. and lots of it wow, here in the gosh. frog district. Yeah, no, that's absolutely perfect. Here you go. Um, I've got a bunch of frog lights <gasps> in there, and honestly, for the amount of slime you give me, take whatever you want. As much as you need, that's ah. all yours. I'll take I'll take a few of the green ones, but then can I take some of the yellow and pink so that I can get the achievement, please? Yes, absolutely. Please do. Yay! I've, I've been I've been giving Yay! people <laughs> been giving people that achievement this episode, so it looks like yeah, lots of people uh, gonna oh, get that Oh, hang on, one. we got a stray. <laughs> oh no! Oh my Continue. God. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll avert my eyes. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you so much for this. This is going to come in so handy. I'm building a copper aging setup over at the ancient capital, so I got to build build with a lot of oxidized copper. So uh, yeah. Wow! Some... I got to come see it someday. See how all the slime is used. Maybe we'll do a field trip with all the frogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they seem like they're, they <laughs> they're they're quite keen on a field trip. Um, by the way, have you seen any other strangers around here besides these creatures? Because uh, yes. I've been bumping into a few of them. 
Yes, they came here. Some of them came here. They're so strange. They're, they just seem very confused about everything. They didn't know where they were, where they came from. Yeah. I just sent them on their way. Gave well, them some milk, sent them on their way. That sounds like you've at least shown them some hospitality, at least. So I've been doing the same, but mm, I'm, I'm not sure how things are going to go around here. I'm a little bit worried about it. Are you saying I should be scared of them? Well, I don't know if you should be scared of them. Just, uh, I don't know, stay on your toes. Okay, I'll have my <laughs> frogs protect me. <laughs> Seems like they're doing a good job of that. So all that slime can be put to use down here, where I've started assembling <laughs> the beginnings of our copper aging setup, Mark IV. And this is going to be the room where everything is laid out, but I need to widen it by... A lot. I wasn't sure if I was going to send the flying machines down this way, but in Survival Guide I have a couple of the modules on either side of the room, and I really like that setup. So I've been measuring some things out, marking out the floor with calcite, kind of looks a bit like a basketball court right now. But I need to push this wall that way and this wall that way, because each of these lines marks where the copper aging module is going to go, and I need nine of these lines total. So far, I only have room for two. So I have a lot more digging to do, but thankfully I now have a lot more slime that I can use to set up the flying machines and the modules that pull the copper out of the flying machine's control. I also need a bunch of honey blocks for this because the machines are built back to back and slime blocks and honey blocks don't stick to each other. So I'll have to go and pay the Princess of Dawn a visit as well and see if I can get hold of some honey blocks from her. Anybody home? Hello? Oh my goodness, <laughs> I hadn't seen Apollo in person before. You are beautiful and huge. Looks like you're guarding the sheep right now, I'll stay away. I think at the last count, this is where the honeycomb was kept, and honestly, I'd love a couple of stacks of that at some point as well. I'm gonna have a lot of copper to wax soon, so I'm gonna take a couple of stacks of that, let's say four stacks, and I'll drop off a stack of frog lights in here. I think that's roughly what the trade was last time I was in town. There are bees all over the place, so I don't know where the main bee farm is, but I'm presuming it's down here? Yes, this looks like the apiary I've heard about. Let's pop on inside and see what's going on in here. This is amazing. It's such a beautiful greenhouse and so many different types of plants, including hmm, some less than savory plants. And this little micro honey block, I think, yes, this is where she keeps the honey blocks. Well, these are obviously going to be a lot more expensive, so I'm going to drop off the rest of my ochre frog lights and one stack each of the others, just to say thank you for all the hard work the bees have been doing. Hopefully that'll be payment enough for a stack of honey blocks, because I know how long gems had to AFK for those. But thankfully the honey blocks are only required for one set of circuits, so I should be able to make that work. And now I can finally return to digging out these walls, but something tells me <laughs> These pickaxes are going to need an upgrade. And I happen to have just the thing stashed away in my ender chest. I've been saving a couple of netherite ingots, wasn't sure if I was going to use them for my own tools or for prizes for somebody else or dungeon loot or anything like that, but right now I think I need all the health I can get. So let's craft up a smithing table and let's upgrade both of these to netherite. And without further ado, let's get digging. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we have both sides of the room dug out and prepared with the lines all across the floor all the way to the back corner. So that's all set up. Now I need to build the circuits and uh, the circuits are going to take a little while. I don't know if I have enough redstone, to be honest, to fill up this. This isn't all the redstone I have. I have a decent amount more in one of these. There it is. But I, I don't know if I have enough to do one entire side, much less two, but I think this is something that we're going to be working on over time. I also want to decorate the room. I, I always end up falling into this trap where I build a massive room and then have to decorate it, but it's under my empire. I feel like I just chuck a, a few ruined parts around the room and we'll see what happens. I still have a bunch more digging out to do because this section of the floor should actually be one block lower than it is because all of the circuits are running on suspended sections across the room. But where in the original build and in my survival guide world, I was building this all out of honeycomb and terracotta. I think I'm going to go with calcite and prismarine this time around. Which doesn't sound like it's going to be loads better in terms of material cost, but I actually have quite a bit of calcite, so I think this is going to work out okay as long as I can remember how to build the circuit. I put the observer around the wrong way that time. It should go facing upwards like that, and the idea is that as soon as a copper block from one of these flying machines runs over the top of this, there we go. The circuit isolates it, keeping it there and allowing it to age. And then four blocks away from this here, it's going to have another copper block doing the same thing. So each of the copper blocks gets spaced out by four blocks automatically when we send a flying machine down the room with nine blocks attached to each side. And the reason I'm happy that we just got so much cobblestone from digging out this room is that I need to make a bunch of droppers. Because while it's in the circuit, an observer is going to be here detecting how often that copper block ages. When it ages a couple of times, we're going to have a dropper facing downwards that's going to 
pump out an item into a dropper below, and this comparator is slowly going to detect the contents of this dropper with a side input comparator, which in my survival guide world is actually reading a cake, but I can't honestly eat that much cake again. So I'm going to put a bunch of items in a furnace here. We're just going to do that with cobblestone or something else from this room. And once there are four non-stackable items in this lower dropper, that should isolate the circuit. So I need a few more items here in the furnace, I think. So after a little bit of trial and error, it looks like a stack of items in the furnace is input slot and five in the output slot or five fuel items if we weren't using smeltable items in here. That should be enough to isolate the circuit until all four non-stackable items end up in that lower dropper. I'm just going to use wooden shovels for that because they're nice and cheap. Once that circuit activates and ejects this copper block, it also activates this redstone dust here, which turns off this torch. And a torch on the opposite side is going to detect whether or not this circuit is finished aging its copper block as well. And once that goes all the way down the line, once all of the torches are switched off, the flying machine returns from over there, collecting all of the finished copper blocks as it goes. Now I just have to build this circuit 89 nine more times for this side of the room and another 90 on that side of the room and we should be able to age 180 copper blocks at a time. But while I'm building all of those circuits I am just going to make sure that one copper block can age correctly in the circuit so that I can make sure I don't make any mistakes in the other 179. And several cups of tea and a lot of furnaces later we have the circuits working and I've proven that they work because these two have been ejected, they are staying there, coming back out over the observers didn't really change anything, and these two torches uh, should be off. Oh, I need a redstone dust there. There we go. Now that's off. So now this part of the circuit is deactivated, and once all of that chains down the line, we should end up with a torch at the end here switching on and that's what's going to send the flying machine back but I need to make sure I know where the flying machine is and the easiest way to do that is to send it off down here with a bunch of copper attached to it so we're going to reset these two circuits manually I haven't built the reset circuit quite yet so we're going to put these wooden shovels back in the top here and they should just remain there until something comes through we're going to pick up 18 blocks of copper which is what one of these flying machines will be able to deliver and we can activate this using a torch to start sending the copper blocks down the line and it looks like both the circuits on either side have grabbed a block and they should keep doing that down here now there should be three wooden shovels left in each of these droppers which it looks like there is and hopefully i haven't missed out any redstone dust anywhere that's going to prevent one of these from picking up a block it looks like it looks like I might have. What's up with this circuit? Yeah, that one was missing some redstone dust there, and this one was missing an observer. Crucial components, but I've been just doing this over and over again, kind of mindlessly, and maybe a little bit distracted by videos on my second monitor. But if we place those two in manually, it should still work just fine. We need to put the other one in here, like so, and that's not got any shovels in it okay good so we're going to manually add three shovels to that one one should already be in the dropper below and that circuit should work as expected so all of those copper blocks are now aging they should all get ejected and switch off these redstone torches as they complete their aging cycle and the last thing we need to do is get a redstone signal to one of these two observers here which i believe is this one here in the back corner that's going to activate the opposite piston that one right there so i'm going to craft some more target blocks because i did end up using a bunch of those on the raceway and once this redstone torch switches on because all of the circuits behind it here have switched off wow did one of those really just age that fast <laughs> A couple of these are really going for it, but at least we have confirmation the circuits work because that redstone torch is switched off. We can send a redstone signal through the back of here into this note block, and once it activates, it'll grab any blocks that are sticking out and return them to the collection station. Although we might have to rewire this because it was going to stick to the flying machine otherwise. There we go, easy fix. And that's just if it's collecting in automatic mode. By the way, we should now be able to send two more copper blocks down here, provided that I come back through and reset the wooden shovels. And as the flying machine goes back, it'll just deliver those to any empty cells and we get more copper blocks starting to age. But that's not the ideal situation just in case one of these gets pushed out at the same time another copper block gets pushed past. Either way this should now be set up so that when this redstone torch activates it dings that note block and the observer sends the flying machine back on down. Now I've just got to wire up the reset for all of these droppers so that the shovels end up in this top dropper automatically and then do this another nine more times. Has this taken longer than just setting the copper blocks down manually and waiting for them to age? Yeah. 
Yes. Is it necessary? 100% no. Am I going to thank myself for it later? Mm, probably. But is it really fun rebuilding this circuit over and over again? Absolutely. This circuit and I have a history at this point, and if nothing else, I'm about history in this season of Empires. By the way, all of these furnaces with the comparators lit up are currently filled with items, and I decided to go with a combination of dirt and sticks. Dirt because it doesn't cook so that, you know, nothing's going to end up in the output slot because the output slot is something you can't put stuff back in so it's kind of awkward getting like cobblestone or something and then just smelting five of it and refilling it and then sticks because they're cheap fuel you can get hold of sticks pretty much any old way but i'm going to be working on this a bunch on streams in fact i may actually end up streaming a little bit later today so by the time this episode comes out i might already be live on twitch and if you want to see a little bit more of the progress on this as well as maybe see who's popping in and out during the day then come by and say hi over at twitch.tv slash where i do a lot of behind the scenes stuff that doesn't happen in the behind the lore episodes here on Empires. But oh, after a long day of work down there, it feels nice to step out into the fresh evening air. And that's where we're going to wrap up this episode of Empires. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and I hope you enjoy what we've got in store for you folks. Don't forget to check out everybody else's videos from this little collaboration, both on the Hermit side and the Empires side, because there's going to be tons of other cool stuff happening, and I have no clue where most of the Hermits have ended up. But for now, leave a like on this video for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm off to kill that zombie that's running towards me, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.